I want you to hold this posture, this place of worship, but if it's okay, I just want to share. Um, four years ago, I heard the voice of God wake me up out of sleep, inviting me into a journey into the book of Revelation. And I was a bit afraid, uncertain, because Revelation is what I always speed read through. Because it's, we, we've been duped. We've been told that it's frightening and, but it's the very first sentence in the book of Revelation, it tells us what this is. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of the false prophet and the beast. And and so the Lord uh, caused me to pause and really see what was there. And John shows us, if, it, if, there, if he shows us anything, he shows us the kind of encounters that God will have with his people. This wasn't just reserved just for John because he was special or because he was boiled in oil and to make up for his hard tribulation, God was going to give him this incredible visitation. Do you know he wants to visit you? It might be in a dream. But we, but we don't equate it the same because we're just us. And so uh, I began to pursue and the Lord began to visit with crazy dreams and visitations. And he caused me to see some things that I didn't try to make happen on my own. It just happened. And so I want to read you. A vision. I was on a drive from San Diego to Los Angeles, and uh, I, I went into an open vision in the whole drive. I don't know how I got there because I was having this encounter. So I'm just going to read it to you. Is that all right? And we'll pretend this is a sermon, okay? This is the sermon. I don't know how to say what I see, but I'm captivated by the view. I behold a swirling flow of water, but not really water. It's river-like, but unlike any river I've ever seen. Niagara comes to mind. But a circling swirl of violent, but gentle love is being expressed. Furious flow. Everybody say furious flow. furious flow. But somehow it was calm and peaceful. At the center is a dance of passion between the father and the son. The most beautiful portrait of worship my eyes have ever seen. The father eternally pouring his love out toward the Son. The Son eternally pouring out his love toward the Father. Endless love and devotion, unmatched. Somehow there is another force drawing me, wooing me, romancing me, inviting me to join the dance. I'm not physically able to sustain what I see and live to tell it, but somehow I'm being drawn by this unseen force, very similar to the essence of the vision I'm seeing, the same essence yet unseen. I somehow understand that it is Him, a persona, the Holy Spirit, the great connector, pressing me, 
pulling me towards the torrent of passion between the Father and the Son. Then it takes me and I am immersed, no longer seen yet visible at the same time, except I look like him, his image, their image. They look the same. The Father is in the Son, and the Son is in the Father, and somehow I'm in the middle, beholding the most beautiful expression of love, and now I'm dancing. One with the Father and Son, drawn here by the Spirit, surrounded by the song and the sound of heaven. The elders are there. When I wrote this, I wasn't even considering the parallel of the book of Revelation and the, and the encounter John had. The elders are there casting their crowns, beholding, bowing, angels crying, holy, holy, again and again. How can this be? I'm in the middle, the midst, and they behold him, but I'm here and I discover there are others here dancing. We are all in him and he is in us dancing. Then I'm suddenly back on earth, but somehow still in heaven. Heaven is not so far, not as far as I always imagined. My heart is full of him, spirit. As I focus, I realize that I am wooing earth dwellers, drawing, longing to bring others into the dance. We're all invited, my purpose discovered. Spirit inside of me, pressing, longing. I am his image. I feel like I can command anything. I look like him so earthly things respond to my command. Sickness, pain, surrenders to my declaration. But I'm on earth, yet still seated in heaven. Heavenly places, everyone come. Come join me, come join us in the dance. I saw worship in a whole different way. It's not a performance on a stage. It's an invitation to participate in the song and the sound of heaven. So I was just, I didn't know, I didn't know how to make sense of even, do I even dare tell this? Two days later, I get a text message from a pastor friend, and the text was just this passage of scripture from Psalm 65, verse 9 through 13 in the message translation. He just texted me this scripture. It says, oh, visit the earth. Ask her to join the dance. Deck her out in spring showers. Fill the God River with living water. Paint the wheat fields golden. Creation was made for this. Drench the plowed fields. Soak the dirt clods with rainfall as harrow and rake bring her to blossom and fruit. Snow crown the peaks with splendor. Scatter rose petals down your paths all through the wild meadows. Rose petals. Set the hills to dancing. Dress the canyon walls with live sheep, a drape of flax across the valleys. Let them shout and shout and shout. Oh, oh, let them sing. This was just one of many supernatural journeys the Lord took me on. It allowed my eyes to see, uh, you can't make this stuff up, right? In 
And so I, I moved into this uh, journey of writing songs. The Lord said, write. He woke me up and said, write the revelation of Jesus. I was thrilled at the invitation, afraid because, well, the first chapter, the third verse says, blessed is the one who reads out loud the words of this prophecy and those who hear. But in the last chapter, it said, cursed is anyone who adds to or takes away the words of this prophecy. So I'm like, Lord, what? You're asking me? I'm just a country boy from Texas with the southern accent. 